Hi guys. Well, imagine that it is another gray, gloomy, cloudy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is now Friday, I think September 17th, 2021, somewhere around there. So this being Friday, we know what that is time for. It is time for the final summer of 2021 ecological meltdown roundup rant where for the last time in the summer of 2021 <clears throat> we will head over to mongabay.com to join up uh, with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there at mongabay.com as they bring us our uh, our latest laundry list I am at the laundry washing my sheets getting ready for the influx of Airbnb <clears throat> guests coming in this weekend. Uh, so a perfect time to go over a laundry list of assaults against our our planet. And I'm going to start, let's start as we frequently do. We're going to start in the very heart of the most untouched tracks of remaining old growth primary rainforest in the middle of the Brazilian Amazon with this report. Illegal logging reaches Amazon's untouched core, terrifying research shows. Satellite imagery shows that logging activity is spreading from peripheral areas of the Amazon towards the rainforest's very core, according to groundbreaking research. The satellite-based mapping of seven of Brazil's nine Amazonian states showed a, quote, terrifying pattern of logging advance that cleared an area three times the size of the city of Sao Paulo between August 2019 and July 2020 alone. <clears throat> At the state level, lack of transparency in logging data makes it impossible to calculate how much of the timber production is illegal. Every week I have to get into the same broken record rant. Who gives a damn whether it's legal or illegal? Logging is logging, okay? Anyway, evidence of logging inside indigenous reserves and conservation units where logging is, quote, prohibited. Yes makes clear that illegal logging accounts for much of the activity. Yes, and uh, as long as we're starting there, uh, I just want to... Uh, all right, we have a five alarm. <clears throat> yes, the alarm bells are going off. Uh, here in the Finger Lakes in the middle of uh, my laundry list. So uh, I want to just go right, good Lord, uh, this thing uh, goes on and on. And of course, uh, of course, I'm only able to touch on a few of these stories, but let's stop here at this one while I'm looking for the story buried away. How about deforestation sweeps national park in Brazil as land speculators advance? Between January and early September, 3,542 deforestation alerts have been confirmed within primary forest within the Campos Amazonicos National Park, according to satellite data, representing a 37% jump over the average amount of forest loss for the previous five years. 
much of the occupation of the park is of the protected area is happening through illegitimate land claims fueled by hopes that protections on the park may be loosened in the future hmm, in the future yeah right environmentalists say even though the park is technically under federal protection this protection has not stopped invaders from falsely registering slices of it as their property. Environmentalists warn the social and environmental impacts could be devastating. The park itself surrounds uh, this big indigenous reserve, uh, also under attack by illegal miners blah 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 okay so right next to that story okay so we just heard those two stories so now Rhett Butler once again and, and you know I, I love Rhett Butler he is one of the biggest chroniclers of the collapse on the planet and once again Rhett Butler right after those two stories how about this uh, how about this greenwashing BS after surge, Amazon deforestation slows for second straight month. Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon declined for the second straight month, according to data released today by Brazil's, the Brazilian government's National Space Research Institute. Uh, deforestation uh, in the Brazilian Amazon hit a 12-year high last year. So anyway, okay. So here, let, let, let's go back. Uh, Rhett, uh, not that Rhett Butler is even aware of this. So, so Rhett, let me get this straight. Uh, in July, you broadcast here on Manga Bay that... Uh, deforestation decreased in July of 2021 according to the Brazilian government. A few days later there was another report right there in the mainstream media claiming that according to non-governmental agencies deforestation actually jumped 57 percent from July last year. So I sent you an email uh, pointing this out, going, what in the hell is going on? Rhett emails me back. Well, Sam, it all depends on whether it's the Brazilian government or non-government organizations reporting deforestation data. And then Rhett limps along and, and reports that there was, in fact, not a drop in deforestation, but a jump in deforestation, depending on who you want to believe. So what does he do now? He, for the second month, he reports this bullshit data coming from the Bozo Nero administration. That logging declined last month, right after reporting these two stories. Rhett Butler knows damn well that this is greenwashing horseshit. Why does he publish this? And then what you're going to find next week or the week after, Rhett is going to come back on here and report according to the non-governmental organizations, deforestation probably jumped 57% uh, in August over last year. Who do you want to believe? Uh, you, you know, at some point, Manga Bay needs to start taking a more advocacy position and calling out this greenwashing bullshit. Do you believe the Bozo Nero government's statistics, or do you believe environmental organizations not associated uh, under the thumb of uh, Jair Bozo Nero. Whose statistics do you want to believe anybody believing for one second that deforestation decreased last month for the second month in a row? 
Uh, anyway, uh, Rhett Butler doesn't believe this. Sancho Panza doesn't believe this. Anybody with a brain doesn't believe this. But anyway, let's go back up, uh, pick up where we left off. All right, what is going on on Chinese fishing boats worked to death how a Chinese tuna juggernaut crushed its Indonesian workers. Yes, one of China's biggest tuna fishing firms, Dalian Ocean Fishing, made headlines last year when four young Indonesian deckhands fell sick and died from unknown illnesses after allegedly being subject to horrible conditions on one of its boats. Yes, now an investigation by Manga Bay and some other uh, organizations uh, have found uh, that all of the, these basically slave conditions were not limited to just one boat, but are in fact fact widespread and systematic across the company's fleet. Yes, uh, China has the world's largest distant water fishing fleet and Indonesia is widely believed to be the industry's biggest supplier of labor. Um, in the last two years at least 30 fishermen from Indonesia died on Chinese long-haul fishing boats, often from unknown illnesses. Okay, we have two of these. It's complicated stories. Okay, the question being, should tree plantations count toward reforestation goals. It's complicated. Global tr globally, tree planting projects are becoming all the rage, but many are counting on old habits of planting monoculture plantations and calling them forest. So I, I fail to see what is complicated about this calling a monoculture uh, tree planting scheme reforestation, and, and, and I'm pretty sure this includes oil palm, that, uh, you know, where once a rainforest stood, you go in there and you replant oil palm and you claim this is reforestation. There is nothing complicated about it. A monoculture plantation is about as much of a forest as a damn cornfield is. It is greenwashing bullshit to call a, I don't care whether it's a Doug, Douglas fir plantation right here in our own U.S. National Forest, or whether it's an oil palm plantation in, in Borneo, whatever, uh, when you cut down a, a, you know, a native forest ecosystem and replace it with essentially a cornfield, it is not a forest. Once again, Rhett Butler knows this as well as I do. There's not a damn thing complicated about this. All right, but speaking of it's complicated, let's see, I think uh, we have another uh, it's complicated uh, one here. Where are the, uh, where is the next complicated, uh, story? And again, uh, guys, uh, this is only, I can only, uh, well, anyway, I guess I've lost, good Lord, there must be 300 studies. Anyway, there was another one on here, 
uh, somewhere, but my God, for me to uh, get th through all these, uh, it's complicated. Uh, you know, all of these, keep it simple, stupid. Anyway, I cannot find the other story, very similar to that, where there's nothing complicated about it. Um, anyway, I should have obviously uh, done this several times so I would have had these lined up. My God! Uh, okay, here we go. Another question with a complicated answer. Are tuna doing as well as the latest extinction risk assessments suggest? Yes. Uh, so anyway, uh, I I vaguely remember, although you have to really dig deep to find out what the hell it suggests, but basically it, it, it suggests that tuna uh, aren't quite as, uh, I, I, I think, what are, what are tuna stocks down, 90, 95 percent? What, what is complicated when, when a fishery collapses 95 percent? It seems to me there is nothing complicated about uh, the extinction of tuna. Anyway, complicated my ass. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. This is probably one for tomorrow's hopium roundup. But I've just decided, uh, since I already have a full plate in my Hopium Roundup, that why Manga Bay continues to uh, churn out this greenwashing Hopium. Yes, how about Indonesia lays out plan to rescue 15 lakes under pressure from human activity? Indonesia has announced a plan to restore 15 deteriorating deteriorating lakes across the country in the next three years. The ecosystems of these lakes has been degraded largely by human related activities such as pollution, logging, and destructive fishing practices. Yes, yeah, so let's see. Alright, I do not know if they're going to make these lakes in probably a five mile uh, corridor around the shores of every one of these lakes, human exclusion zones. There is one way to restore an Indonesian lake ecosystem or any other ecosystem in Indonesia or anywhere else on this planet, and that is to make the ecosystem a human exclusion zone. Okay? If, if you want to reverse human impacts on an ecosystem, you take the humans out of the ecosystem and watch the restoration begin. Okay, so Manga Bay, you know, as I mentioned each week, has its own YouTube channel where they do a... So this week, uh, they their YouTube over at Manga Bay's channel is, What is the problem with fishing gear? So, uh, go over there to their YouTube channel to find out what is the problem with fishing gear. Starting with the fact that it's fishing gear. <clears throat> Alright. So, who is responsible for Jakarta, Indonesia's air pollution woes? How about President 
Joko Widodo. All right, it is Joko Widodo and several of his top government officials are liable for the poor air quality in the country's capital of Jakarta. Yes, the judge ordered the government, starting with President Joko Widodo, to carry out serious actions to improve air quality in Jakarta and ensure the rights of citizens to clean and healthy air. Yes. All right, we have some more hopium. Creation of three northern white rhino embryos may indicate hope. Hope <coughs> for other rhino species. Yes, anyway. All right. Uh, let's see, guys, again, I, I'm, I'm barely able to brush up against about half of these. Uh, here's one on uh, saving sea turtles. Uh, okay, how did the corona panic play out with saving sea turtles? The corona panic has posed tough challenges for sea turtle conservation projects across the planet. Conservationists describe how economic issues, otherwise known as lockdowns, as corona panic lockdowns have put turtles and conservationists themselves at risk from poachers while travel restrictions have crippled sea turtle <coughs> rescue operations in Costa Rica and Malaysia. The lull in human seashore activities, uh, you know, the flip side of this is that the actual tourists going there, at least those pressures were reduced by clueless moron tourists, you know, going out there and taking selfies of themselves with the turtles and riding around on the turtles' backs. So, uh, so give one to the corona panic for at least uh, lessening the pressure of the clueless moron eco-tourists. But, of course, that plus far outweighed by the minus that, uh, that turtle poachers have had a complete free reign, I guess now, for two turtle nesting seasons. Okay. How about fashion to die for? The fur trade's role in spreading zoonotic diseases. Anyway, uh, I think that says it all. Um, did you realize that oil palm can be damaging? I never thought about that. Uh, okay, let's go over to a marine reserve off the coast of Peru for this news. Marine experts flag new Peruvian marine reserve that allows industrial fishing. Hmm, experts, and you really have to be an expert to come up to this conclusion. Experts say the establishment of a new marine protected area off the coast of Peru that allows large-scale fishing and the capture of deep-sea cod within the reserve 
will damage the biodiversity of the reserve. Huh. The Nazca Ridge National Reserve is the first fully marine <coughs> protected area in Peru. Is the first fully protected marine, yeah, yeah, in Peru, covering about 24,000 square miles of the ocean floor. Uh, there's only one problem. It's doing nothing to protect the reserve. Anyway, there you go. All right, that's one more corona, corona panic story. <clears throat> Lockdowns did not stop 2020 from being the deadliest year ever for Earth defenders. Yes, the countries with the highest death tolls overall were Colombia, Mexico, the Philippines, Brazil, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Overall, the Americas were the most dangerous for land and environmental defenders, with seven of the top ten countries by number of killings located in Latin America. Nicaragua and Honduras were the deadliest per capita as threats against indigenous land by cattle rancher, by cattle ranchers and economic migrants continue to rise. There you go. Uh, all right. Uh, Guys, I'm just skipping over the hopium. Uh, let's see. You know, all of this stuff, I, I never pay much attention to this red, this R-E-D-D -D thing. Uh, you, you know, it's just another red, it's just, it's just all a bunch of hopium. Uh, so what is going on in red? Indonesia terminates agreement with Norway on one billion dollar red scheme. The Indonesian government has decided to terminate a one billion dollar deal with Norway under which Indonesia promised to preserve its rainforest to curb carbon dioxide emissions. Yes. Uh, the Indonesian government says nonetheless it remains committed to reducing its greenhouse gas emissions despite ending, you know, the emissions reducing agreement. Yes. Um, okay, guys, here is another story about, uh, you, you know, these indigenous people, should they be allowed to uh, continue doing what indigenous, should they continue to be planet nibblers inside protected areas? Is planet nibbling by indigenous people, should that be, this is, you know, one of these major debates, this story, going over there to somewhere I have actually been which is the Ngoro Goro Crater in Tanzania. Uh, a Maasai leader uh, told Manga Bay that restrictions on crop cultivation and cattle grazing inside Ngorongoro are causing widespread hunger and despair. Yes. 
Um, so, okay. Should, what is this? Uh, should cattle grow? All right. Should the fact... Now, now, cattle, you know, are cattle... Number one, you know, I've never understood where these Maasai indigenous people got cattle from. All right. Uh, how, how long have Maasai... The Maasai tribe even been raising cattle. I've never understood this. Uh, but should indigenous people, you know, who were there, uh, I honestly don't know the answer to the question, were the Maasai grazing cattle and raising crops inside the borders of this national park before the national park was created or not? Uh, everyone knows my answer. Should, uh, y y you know, environmentally sensitive protected reserves uh, be human exclusion zones? Then, of course, then you got to ask the question, uh, there's also, should they be exclusion zones for eco-tourists, like I was when I went to Ngorogoro? Uh, you, you, you know, we were driving around in cars, uh, taking pictures of flamingos, I think is what we were looking at. Anyway, so what forests on the planet are the most carbon dense? It is not the Amazon rainforest, it's actually mountain forest in Africa. Mountain forest in Africa. Uh, high altitude forest covering 40 million acres of land in Africa, primarily concentrated in the Democratic Republic of Congo, are the most carbon dense. According to this, I don't believe this for one second. According to this story, 5% of the most carbon rich uh, has disappeared in the last 20 years. 5% in 20 years. Uh, eh. Anyway, so at that rate, if you believe that statistic for one minute, 10% in the next 20 years. So. 5% in, 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 in 20 years, do the math. Uh, all right, what is the latest about deep sea mining? <clears throat> deep sea mining gets a resounding rejection from conservation authorities. Members of the IUC and World Conservation Congress have voted overwhelmingly in support of a moratorium on deep sea mining, an activity that conservationists say could cause, otherwise will cause, irreversible damage to the ocean. The South Pacific nation of Nauru recently triggered a two-year rule which would require the International Seabed Authority to grant it a license to begin deep sea mining there under whatever regulations are in place by them. Conservationists say there is currently little to no understanding of how deep sea mining could negatively affect the deep sea environment. Again, BS. There is plenty of information available. Little to no understanding? Uh, there is all kinds of information available to uh, how deep sea mining will destroy the, uh, the, the, the floor of the deepest oceans on the planet. How can they sit there and say that? Uh, now, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of other consequences other than the most obvious you better believe there's plenty of other 
uh, unknown unknowns uh, that will be unknown knowns when they crank up in two years. But you know what I'm saying. They have enough information to make a moratorium uh, forever on this. It's never going to happen. We all know damn well because we need those. Uh, it's, they're mainly talking, uh, the number one place this stuff is going is to electric car batteries. The number one market for this stuff as the UN uh, promoting electric cars. You know, the United Nations, Joe Biden, all of these other uh, clueless morons. Uh, this is all part of the Green New Deal, raping and pillaging the bottom of the deepest oceans on this planet. Uh, we cannot have a Green New Deal without deep sea mining. But uh, we started out with deforestation, Amazon deforestation in Brazil, so we're going to end seven kilometers, what's seven miles from the Brazilian border over there in eastern Peru as illegal logging road in Peru near Brazil indigenous groups warn of calamity. Loggers are illegally reopening an abandoned road in Peru's Ucayali region. We just had the same story from the Atlantic forest in Brazil last year, I mean last week, and so now we see that loggers are illegally reopening an abandoned road in eastern Peru, threatening the dozens of indigenous territories along the country's border with Brazil. Uh, the road reportedly cut through the Sawawo Indigenous Reserve in Peru last month, stopping less than seven miles from the Brazilian border. The project is not authorized by Peru's government, but has forged ahead anyway with no environmental impact studies or consultation with indigenous communities. Critics of the road say it will bring a surge in deforestation, drug trafficking, and river degradation for the region's indigenous communities who have been fighting off the loggers for decades and are now demanding that authorities act to stop the advance of the road. Yes, you get out there, authorities in advance. Stop the advance of the road. But uh, I have uh, got to stop the advance of my dirty sheets and head back into the laundromat so I can keep on being a good little Airbnb host. Get out there and enjoy your dirty sheets while you still can. Bye guys.